Toys for Bob has been on our minds for a little bit since they've become an indie studio. One of the questions that remains, though, for many, many fans, can Toys for Bob still work on Spyro 4? Furthermore, can they work on any other Spyro titles or even Crash Bandicoot titles? Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Gaia here, and back with a brand new Spyro 4 video. Now, if you've been living under a rock and you don't know, Toys for Bob has recently become independent. Now, what does that exactly mean? Well, in very, very, very short terms, it basically means that, well, Toys for Bob doesn't have to answer to anybody. They can make and develop anything that they want because they're independent. They don't need to rely on any big AAA publisher. And overall, it's amazing. And the reason why that's amazing is because, well, Toys for Bob is known for already their amazing work ethics and already their amazing work atmosphere. And imagine that, but away from the Activision Microsoft space. I mean, it just sounds amazing to work there. However, there have been concerns raised by many, many, many fans on whether or not Toys for Bob can actually continue to develop titles for Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon, more specifically Spyro 4. Now, there is definitely a bit of a wrinkle in this um, thought. The reason why this is a little bit of a problem is simply because, yes, Microsoft actually does own the intellectual rights to both Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon, which means that only studios underneath the platform of Xbox can produce these IPs. So, does that mean since Toys for Bob has gone indie, is Toys for Bob allowed to make Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon titles? Technically, no, but fear not because there is a lot more nuance and thoughts to this. So don't freak out. It's going to be okay. I'm going to explain. What people tend to forget about game development is that there's this aspect that's called third party development. Now, some people might be confused to that, but let me quickly explain. Imagine a AAA studio like Xbox approaching a studio like Toys for Bob and asking them to develop a title on behalf of Xbox through a contract. It allows the indie developer to then negotiate with the AAA studio to figure out what they want to do on the project and if they want to work on that project. And if they come to a mutual agreement in terms of funding, then the AAA publisher hands the developer the money and the developer goes and makes a game based under the IP that is under that publisher. Now, like I said, Toys for Bob relatively recently announced that they went indie. And in that announcement, they said this, quote, to make this news even more exciting, we're exploring a possible partnership between our new studio and Microsoft. Now, remember what I just said about third party development, about how a AAA publisher would approach an indie and ask them to make one of their games. This lines up perfectly and exactly to that statement and to that process. Now, some of you might be thinking, yeah, okay, CG, I understand, I get it, third-party developers, but has Microsoft ever sent off a piece of a retro IP that they have off to a different studio from the studio that actually owned it previously? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, they have, and it has happened. Let me introduce you to Dalala Studios. Dalala Studios is an indie company, as in they are not owned by Activision, they're not owned by Microsoft, they are their own independent studio. Now, if you are into some very classic games, you may recognize this name as they were the developers of the 2020 release of Battletoads. And if you may know, Battletoads was originally made by Rareware all the way back in the day, being one of the most popular and most ported games ever in the industry. While yes, Battletoads is a retro IP developed by Rare, it was Dalala that brought it back in 2020. So there is precedent to suggest 
that yes, Microsoft will do this and has done it in the past. Additionally, there's a little bit of an interesting timing issue. Typically, when companies go indie, they need to do crowdfunding, whether it be through Indiegogo, Kickstarter, and have some sort of tangible idea to pitch to everybody. Toys for Bob didn't actually do that. Toys for Bob just went straight indie and already had a project in development. So they actually kind of skipped over that aspect because again, in the announcement, they say that there is a game already in development. And ironically enough, if we go and take a look at their social media, specifically Toys for Bob, they showed that back in December of 2023, that they were already working on a game in Unreal Engine 5. This image here shows the entire team of Toys for Bob sitting down and looking at different presentations for different aspects for a project. And I want to remind you, this post was before the company went indie. And again, it just so happens that after they've gone indie, they still have a project in development. So to me, that makes it that this project that we're seeing in Unreal Engine 5 is the same project that they're mentioning in the article of them going indie. Speaking of the article of them going indie, if you want to sit there and you want to nitpick and see the words of possible partnership, then you should read a couple lines below where it says, quote, our friends at Activision and Microsoft have been extremely supportive of our new direction and we're confident that we will continue to work closely together as a part of our future. Now, again, the article is explaining that Toys for Bob is going to be involved with both Microsoft and Activision. And they are literally saying that they are, quote, confident that they are going to be a part and working closely together as a part of Toys for Bob's future. Come on, do, do I have to spell it out? Now again, the piece of evidence that a lot of people are arguing and debating about online is right at the end of the article where it says, quote, so keep your horns on and your eyes out for more news. Thank you to our community of players for always supporting us through our journey. We can't wait to share updates on our new adventure as an indie studio. Talk to you soon. So, of course, people are pointing out the fact that they're saying, hold your horns, which is a reference to Spyro, as potentially a reference. But people are sitting here and saying, no, it's not a reference. But here's the thing. If you don't know Toys for Bob by now, you clearly haven't been here long enough. Toys for Bob is well known for years now to be always dropping hints and little nuggets of information for their future titles. They have been doing this since 2018. It is a big obvious thing that if you've been watching Toys for Bob since then, they drop nuggets of information everywhere. For example, we're still finding information that we didn't even know were hints back in the day, like during the Crash Bandicoot 25th anniversary. While the day was happening over on the Crash Bandicoot page, they were posting like crazy with a whole bunch of different images of Crash Bandicoot interacting in different ways. Now, at the time, we thought that it was going to be the time that they were going to announce Wumpa League, as that was the name of the Crash multiplayer title at the time. However, what we didn't know at that moment was that the game was called Crash Team Rumble. However, one of the posts that Crash Bandicoot dropped was this, of Crash running across the screen here with ones and zeros, and it's saying rumble, rumble, rumble. And at the time, we had no idea what it meant, and we didn't really even look at it. However, looking back, and with hindsight being 2020, that was a hint towards the title of the game, because we didn't even know the title of the game yet. And again, that's why I think Hold Your Horns, obviously being a reference to Spyro, is a direct reference to what Toys for Bob is currently working on. Notice how they just say hold your horns they don't say hold your wumpas or they don't give a generalization it's literally just hold your horns in my opinion that's a big telling feature to say that the future that they are currently working on is related to our purple lad spyro now some of you might literally ask okay what was the point of toys for bob going indie then if microsoft is just going to turn around and contract them to work on crash and spyro anyways why couldn't they just continue to work the way they had it before? Well, it's a little bit complicated. 
Microsoft operates their companies by letting the studio heads and kind of letting their whole studios run under their own autonomy. So basically, one of the things that they did was they made sure that Blizzard and Activision weren't really working together anymore. Blizzard was working on their stuff and Activision was working on their stuff. But the thing is, while Toys for Bob was still kind of set free, they were still under the Activision rule, which means that Activision still could technically tell Toys for Bob to go back and work on any project that they want. However, if Toys for Bob were to become an indie studio, that means that they now develop a contract and speak directly with Microsoft and they will work with Activision, but as a partner and not as a underling studio, which basically means that now Toys for Bob takes their commands from Microsoft when it comes to these types of projects and Activision can't tell Toys for Bob to go work on any other titles like Overwatch or Call of Duty. It's up to Toys for Bob to decide what they want to work on. All this is to say that the argument that Toys for Bob is not working on a new Spyro because they are now indie, it does not add up and it does not make sense because it is still very, very, very possible for them to be able to work with Microsoft when it comes to these IPs, whether it's Spyro 4, a new Crash Bandicoot, or heck, maybe even Banjo-Kazooie. But that's for a different video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you want to see more Spyro news and more Crash Bandicoot content, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye-bye!